How's it going, Grey Boys? Believe it or not, it is still playoff season for us. And while we may have lost in the semifinals, we still have to figure out who wins the whole thing. Georgia is the team that beat us. Uh, and they're going to be facing off against USC. It is the number three versus the number one team. So let's go ahead and get that set up. So we can go ahead and load up the utility tool and set this national championship up. And as it loads here, we can see there it is at the Superdome, the national championship of the college football playoff between USC and Georgia, the one seed versus the three seed. I'm very curious to see who comes out on top. I feel like Georgia is a higher overall than USC, but I guess we'll just have to wait and see. So let's go ahead and sim this. Will the Trojans come out on top? Or will it be the Bulldogs? Your national champions for this year are the USC Trojans. They won it pretty convincingly. 42 to 24. And my goodness, that is a big turnaround in terms of this game. Georgia led it 24 to 7 going into the half. And... I just feel bad for fans of Georgia sports teams at this point. The Braves winning the World Series, I'm sure, has made things a little bit better, but it just continues in the football world. Sure, 24-7 isn't quite as bad as 28-3, but USC blanked the Bulldogs in the second half while putting up 35 points of their own, and at the same time, they put up over 500 yards of total offense. And it's not like anything crazy happened. Georgia had one fumble on the game. Uh, that was the only turnover, but USC just getting it done with their offense. So once again, the Trojans are your national champions for the year. They finished the season at 15-1 and one and can bring some honor to the Pac-12 for the first time in a very long time. So let's bring back the utility tool and we can finalize our playoffs. And with USC set as the champions, we can go on and take a look at the rest of the bowl games. So let's go ahead and advance to the end of the bowl season and take a look at what happened with the other matchups around the country. One thing that's very interesting, I don't know if the polls just updated. I'm pretty sure George was number three. We're still sitting at 14 uh, at the end of bowl season, so... That's definitely a little bit weird. Nebraska jumps up a bunch of spots after not having to uh, deal with a lot there, but we just stay still and all these teams move around us. That kind of hurts, especially after we won one playoff game and then we're incredibly competitive in another. You would think that would lend us a little bit of credibility, but I guess not this time. I'm going to scroll through all these bowl games. Uh, we won't necessarily stop to look at all of them, but if you see your favorite team, feel free to pause to take a, a look at the final score. And we're just going to go down towards the more interesting matchups. We've got a blowout by a number four Penn State playing a six and seven Miami. Uh, Oregon State loses by one to North Carolina. That's a weird football score, 23 to 22. West Virginia, the team that we put into the Red Box Bowl because uh, the game wasn't going to give them a bowl, wins it 45-28. to So we probably took a bowl win away from UCLA uh, and just handed it to West Virginia, but at least the Mountaineers made the most of it. And I'm sorry for UCLA fans because, well, they're not going to live it down. They go 6-7 and seven on the season uh, while their rivals across town win the national championship. Something that they never want to see. Texas Tech beats Oregon. And what else do we have? Uh, I guess we're kind of down to our New Year's Six games, which means we're pretty much down to the playoffs. There might be a couple other. There's that USC Cal game. Oklahoma squeaks out a win against Navy. Purdue actually ends up beating Florida and finishes inside the top 10. In the Citrus Bowl, it is Nebraska beating LSU. There's that Rose Bowl between USC and Oklahoma State. 
Alabama puts up a big number, 40 to seven against Vanderbilt. Kind of a weird SEC versus SEC uh, bowl game, but yeah, weirder things have happened, I guess. There's our loss to Georgia, our win against Michigan. Georgia's win against Georgia Tech. Postal's loss to Cal. Uh, Houston losing to Ole Miss. Akron beating ULM. That's good for us. We need the conference to be getting those bowl wins. And then the national championship with USC again beating Georgia. Uh, the score is wrong on a lot of these. But if you look at the Dayton result down there at the bottom right, that's where it shows the correct numbers. The reason that it's kind of wrong at the top is just because of the way that the uh, utility tool works. But nonetheless, we are done with this first season as the offensive coordinator at Eastern Michigan. So we can just advance to the end of the season and just kind of see where it takes us in a recruiting battle with a bunch of guys. And we'll hope for the best here as we get into the offseason. Now we do get a ton of XP. I'm not sure if it's enough to level us up, but just all sorts of good stuff going on there. And we have been extended an offer uh, to stay on as the offensive coordinator. But obviously, that's not something that we want. So we can head into the coaching carousel to see if we can become the head coach of the team. Now, obviously, there's no guarantees uh, as uh, Jimmy Lake gets fired from Washington. That seems pretty topical. Uh, but yeah, there's no guarantees that we get offered the job. There's no guarantees that this coach retires because I don't know what's going to happen. Uh, you know, there's a chance that our defensive coordinator could get hired instead. We are getting offered a lot of these positions. BYU. Well, shoot. BYU just picked up Andre McDonald, our defensive coordinator. So we don't have to worry about him stealing our job the question is is it gonna pop up and i see in eastern michigan here is it the head coach it is brian van gorder has retired from coaching the age of 69 and we are on the list so will we be hired we have been offered the head coaching job at eastern michigan honestly that is a sigh of relief because i didn't know what the heck i was gonna do uh, if they didn't offer us the job, I didn't have any other contingencies. Um, we are, a I don't know, five-year extension. Target wins per year is just five. So I guess the administration sees this past year as a complete fluke, but they should know. Hiring me, uh, <laughs> it should be, it should be pretty safe. So we will absolutely sign that contract. I can't sign my name on the line any quicker. So we can just go ahead and be the head coach and we will now skip to the end of the coaching carousel as the head coach at Eastern Michigan. So we have finally taken over the program. We can advance towards our players leaving stage and we can now see our uh, coaching changes. And it seems like they may have hired us, but I don't know if they hired it anybody else for the coordinators because it doesn't look like it based on the upgrades available to us now i will go through and take a look at some head coaching stuff and we'll show off the interesting one uh obviously uh andre mcdonald going to byu our old coordinator is pretty interesting jimmy lake has been hired on at louisville and already he's got that low job security jason candle i think one of our old coordinators from coastal carolina has been fired from michigan state mike leach has retired interestingly enough and the last kind of interesting one is todd orlando being hired by the huskies so let's quickly just do all of our coaching level ups we have 23 upgrades available and uh we're looking rough <laughs> in the coordinator department uh, we get our defensive coordinator, Jeff Schmetting, who I believe was the Boise State defensive coordinator. And I think he's now in real life uh, an assistant coach at Auburn. But John Arnold, though, I'm fairly certain is completely made up. And well, I guess we'll just put that one level up into the up tempo and hope that our offense isn't too rough next year. 
As for us, I like to focus on the recruiting side, although I still don't think that we'll be doing any more than one level into the insta commit. So uh, hopefully that means we can get some work on the head coaching game management side. But obviously we'll go with all of our scouting. Uh, at least one locksmith. We'll see what else we have. Uh, we want all the opener and the closer. Give me all the kitchen sink. Letter of intent for sure we want, especially for this upcoming recruiting cycle. We'll put uh, some into the royal treatment. And we'll go three because I don't really like the pipeline. I just want to unlock that one insta commit. Let's get over here and, uh, well, we'll just work on the antifreeze a little bit. And uh, why not? No controller vibration. Uh, that, that might make things easier on me. I, I don't know. <laughs> At the very least, it'll make it so that I don't get startled when my controller is sitting on my desk and it vibrates. Now we can always change those later on, but for now, that's how I'm going to have it. And uh, we're going to take a look at the players leaving, but we're also going to be using the Dynasty tool to change some of this. So uh, who knows what's going to happen. And uh, with transfers, well, I'm allowed to do what I want to try to convince them to stay. But let me load this into the uh, Dynasty tool first. So I've got the tool loaded up now. We'll go to the player's leaving stage and we will open the Dynasty file. And this is the updated look at who's going to be leaving. 20 players leaving, one transferring, and one entering the draft. The one player entering the draft is Serge Mitchell, the 91 overall wide receiver. Totally makes sense. Uh, I just hope that he actually does get picked up. Projected for the fourth round. Hopefully he has a good career. Uh, and then we're going to lose a lot of players. Uh, it's going to make things very difficult for us in this next season. It seems like almost all of our talent is leaving. Wade Benjamin, our linebacker, is gone. Jesse Wagner, our workhorse running back, is leaving. Ed Bird is leaving. Dan Broussard, Jonathan Nixon. Just, uh, it seems like almost every single name that i would possibly say during an episode is gone and the redshirt freshman uh right guard courtney keith wants to transfer we're gonna see if we can convince him otherwise not only does he want to transfer but he wants to transfer to ohio and i can't have him going to another uh team in our conference although i also can't promise him a lot he is 67 overall so courtney keith i will say you will play in more than three games and yeah, he's gone. So <laughs> that's a little bit of a shame, but it is the way that it is. So many players gone. There's nothing we can do about it now. We just got to move on to the next stage and hope that maybe somebody wants to transfer to us. Well, draft results have showed up and Wade Benjamin, I didn't even know, was trying to go into the draft, but he has been picked up in the seventh round. And unfortunately for Serge Mitchell, he uh, dropped down to the seventh round but at least he got drafted and that's two players for us that'll help out uh some of our recruiting rankings nobody wants to transfer to us this year which is a bit of a shame you would think you know you've got a coach with a lot of prestige coming in to take over a program that just overachieved you would think somebody would be like yeah let's go play for that guy i'll get a ton of playing time but it's not the case so I guess we'll just have to move on to that recruiting stage and hope for the best. Now going into National Signing Day, we have 13 total commits, a four star, uh, five three stars, five two stars, and two one stars. Uh, 79th in the country. I would love to get top 60. I feel like top 50 is a bit of a stretch, but it's just going to depend on what we can do uh, at the end here. Alabama with only nine total commits right now. One five-star and eight three-stars. That definitely seems like they're underachieving. And Texas with the three five-stars is pretty impressive. So we have scholarships offered to everybody. And we are in uh, the lead with a ton of these players. The question is going to be, who do we pick up? And how much work is it going to be? Now, for some guys like the kicker, Luke Clark, we won't be giving any points to because we're up 13,000, so we shouldn't need to. Uh, Frank Blair, I feel fairly confident on. We're the only team to offer him a scholarship, uh, but he's only 84% locked, so I'm going to tentatively give him 1,000 points. 
And then we'll come back and revise that if we need to. Avery Rawls would be a huge pickup for us. This is a four-star uh, defensive end, the number four defensive end in the country. And we're fighting tooth and nail with Ball State to get him. So this is going to be where a majority of our points are. Honestly, I'm going to go to 14,000 and come down from there because that's how important I think this guy could be, especially on defense. We know that I struggle to use her on defense, so the better players I can get there to help me out, uh, the better our results will be. And honestly, I'm going to stick him at 10,000 points right now just because I think he's that important. There's a few other players that we're in decent battles for uh, against decent teams, but I'm not sure how much I want to commit to those. Lay McCoy, I feel like, might commit to us. We're up 2,000, but he's not very locked in. Uh, and I don't know if he's going to want to come across the country from Spokane. Uh, I don't think we're getting Corey McCutcheon. Uh, Mike Williams, we're too far behind Central Michigan. That's not worth fighting. I feel like we should get Mark Morris. Alabama doesn't seem to be too big of a threat, but these two guys, Lance James and Clinton Whitfield, I mean, we're a thousand or 1100 points in front of UNC and eight, almost 900 in front of UCLA. I'm kind of thinking maybe 2000 points each should hopefully be enough. I mean, they're not the greatest players, but we lost so much talent last year that we definitely need to bring guys in. So beyond that, I'm not really sure where else we would give uh, points to that's worth it. Some of these guys down near the bottom, we might just happen to pick up. Uh, and I did give five points to Luke Clark so he wouldn't feel left out. Uh, and also, I would be really upset if he didn't commit. But otherwise, I think that's it. I feel like 1,000 should be enough to get Frank Blair. And 10,000 certainly has to be enough to get Avery Rawls. In fact, I'm going to pull uh, a thousand away from Avery and give a thousand more to Frank Blair just to uh, just to make sure. I know that 9,000 points is almost certainly overkill, but for a player like Rawls, I think it's worth it. And the last thing that I need is for us to miss out on this guy. So I guess we'll just advance towards that signing day, uh, cross our fingers and hope for the best. So what is it going to be? Oh, it's good news. Frank Blair, Avery Rawls, Luke Clark, Clinton Winfield, Lance James, Mark Morris all commit. Then we get a couple of uh, bottom of the barrel scraps. Andy Madsen and James Hayes both showing up as well. Uh, I mean, sure, it would have been great to get Corey McCutcheon or Mike Williams, but those two guys were just too far out of our reach. Um, so we, I think, have to be happy with what we got. Top class. In the MAC, a t uh, two more four-star prospects, apparently, unless it counts the one that we already had. Two top 10 prospects. I don't even know who the second one is. Six three-stars for eight total. So where does that put us? For our, uh, our class rank, I think it's going to be... Oh my gosh, it's ridiculously good. 34th in the country. Three four-stars, 11 three-stars, five two-stars, and two one-stars. We lost 20 players. We pick up 21. We're looking really, really solid there. Michigan, the team that we beat in the in-state opponent, ends the recruiting period with the nation's number one class. A couple of five-stars, and then 10 four-stars and 10 three-stars. That's just an impressive class. So we've got our guys... Next, we got to change some positions and see what we could do to try and round this team out. We picked up a couple of Juco athletes that will certainly help us out. And uh, Jared Brown, I mean, that 95 speed, 91 acceleration is certainly going to be helpful in returning kicks. I'm tempted to put him at wide receiver. That's where he's best at. 77 overall. Uh, he can kind of play some defense and we might have him as an Ironman athlete playing both ways. But uh, after losing Jesse Wagner, I got to have a new workhorse running back. So we're going to put in the Juco Jr. into that spot. And then Marcus Brown is one of these rare athletes that I think is a lineman. Uh, he can probably play a decent amount of defense. And yeah, he's actually really good on the defensive line, but he's also really good on the offensive line. He would be an 80 overall center. So we're going to come back after we know what our lines look like and make the decision for him in a second. 
This is a spot I'm a little bit worried at. Our best quarterback is a 63 overall right now. Hopefully that gets better. Uh, I don't, I don't really trust this all too much, and that's going to make things difficult. So after looking, our offensive line honestly isn't too terrible, but uh, the center position definitely a little bit weak. 65 overall freshman, 64 overall freshman, and a 54 overall freshman are the best players that we have there. So we're going to be taking our Juco athlete in Marcus Brown, who is a 80 overall center. We're going to plug him in there and hope that that fills a gap for us. So with our position changes done, now we can do go to our training results. And I love the training uh, that the Dynasty tool gives us. So we can load up the player progression. And again, this works so much better and it makes things so much more interesting. And I'm curious to see if we have any players that just skyrocket on their overall. Now, again, if you're unfamiliar, uh, this progression model uh, takes a lot of things into account. Um, your academics, facilities, pro potential, head coach, offensive coordinator, defensive coordinator, so many other things, including players, uh, hidden potential skill, and it puts all those together. And then from there determines whether or not a player improves or potentially regresses. Um, we can see Leon Walters, this cornerback, goes down three overall. Uh, but we have a few guys going up. Uh, Eric Ray, the right tackle, going up six overall is huge. Uh, so honestly, I'm liking that quite a bit. I do want to see our highest overalls are decently solid. I mean, we have two guys in the 80s, so that's going to be pretty rough. But they're both in the secondary, which is nice. How about uh, the biggest gains? We had three players go up plus six. Our punter, right tackle, and thankfully a quarterback. So it could be a little bit uh, worse. And we had some guys really regress. A middle linebacker and Ryan Thomas went down five. Uh, we had the Leon Walters and then a couple other no-name players kind of drop. And then Brady Davis, that left guard, dropping one. That certainly hurts. So good news is with Albert Johnson going up six, he already was our best quarterback on the roster, I think. But that will certainly make things uh, a lot more comfortable, even though our quarterback situation is still going to be pretty dang rough. So now that we have our training results in, we can continue to move through here and go to the cut players stage. And this should be pretty simple for us. We have a lot of uh, bad players on the team, but also we only need to get rid of one of them. So we'll try to get rid of the worst player possible, which is this 58 overall center. And with that done, we have cut all the players that we need to. It's always nice when you recruit pretty much the exact same amount of players as you lost in the offseason. We won't be doing any sort of custom conferences, but I do want to go into this so that we can reset our uh, offensive coordinator, or maybe it's our, def yeah, our defensive coordinator skill tree. No offense to Jeff Schmetting, but I think that we could figure this out or set this up a little bit better. So we want uh, the recharge filled out and we need to upgrade our uh, pass coverage because that's always a rough spot for us. And then probably uh, some powered finesse moves and then we'll continue just to work on tackling. And I think that that's a little bit better of a setup for us. So with the off season pretty much done, let's head to the preseason. Okay, well, here we are. Uh, we're going to start, obviously, with our red shirting. I like to save the recruits to last, and I think that we have a lot of red shirting that we're going to be doing. Um, I'm going to red shirt both of our quarterbacks here, just because if we need to burn their red shirt, we always can. If Albert Johnson gets injured at running back, we need Jared Brown, uh, but we'll sit the guy at the bottom of the list in Lionel Goodwin. We have a lot of wide receivers on the team. Um, I'm not going to sit Mike Tyler, but we will sit the two guys at the bottom. Tight end Ernest Bennett will sit, even though he made uh, a decent contribution last year, but he's 63 overall. If we let him stew for another year, he'll be able to contribute even more. We'll definitely be sitting Jermaine Richardson, this freshman center. At left end, we have Antoine Walker who can sit. 
at defensive tackle. Brian Valentine can ride the pine this year. And strong safety-wise, we have Travis Bracken. Uh, 60 overall just is going to be worth less than uh, a tired 78 or 71. So he's going to sit. Uh, and if we have a kicker, let's see. We want Luke Clark, the freshman. But we'll sit Kyle Harris and hope that he can get better. And then I think that's it. So our red shirting is done. I already know that I'm not going to want to change the depth chart. I'll just have to be make sure that uh, if uh, Albert gets injured, we are quick to burn the red shirt of one of our other quarterbacks so that we don't have uh, Stan Williams or Jerome Simmons coming in and running the offense when they can't pass to save their lives. The game has auto-scheduled some really interesting out-of-conference matchups. I was going to change these up to make them interesting matchups, but loading in here... I mean, I like what they're giving us. At home against Michigan State, we were going to play a home game no matter what. Why not play it against an instant opponent that we haven't gone up against uh, and take them to town, hopefully on the gray field. Now, our second game is away at Michigan, and I would play this game. I love that the game just randomly scheduled it for us, but we just played them in the playoffs, so we're going to switch that one up. And I'd like to play a decently ranked team on the road. Uh, one that we haven't played before. One that kind of makes sense. Mac and Big Ten, I feel like, would pair up well for an out-of-conference. So we're going to go play the Boilermakers. And for our third out-of-conference, I want to play against UAB because I really like the uh, children's hospital uniforms that they have. So we will go on the road to Birmingham, take on the Blazers. Uh, and then we have a weird little spot here where we have two bye weeks back to back. Ooh, we might need to change that. Well, we were going to play UAB, but again, I just don't think back to back bye weeks makes any sense. So we're going to make things a little bit more interesting and let's play Rutgers. I mean, I feel like it could be a decent challenge. They are technically power five. But it's also a game that potentially we could win. So realistically, we look at this as game that we will lose, game that we will lose, and then a game that we have a chance to win. They are all uh, Big Ten teams, but we just have strong ties to that part of the country, I guess. So with our custom schedule being set, let's jump into the recruiting. Obviously, we'll take a look at the top 100 first. To see if anybody has any interest in us the answer is no that's kind of sad but also not very surprising well somebody has to have some interest in us and good news is there's a quarterback that really likes us he is from michigan and he's got two other michigan schools in his top three but i mean our quarterback situation is dire so immediately we're gonna throw that on and i'll probably be adding any decent player that has any sort of interest in us so uh, we'll come back to this when we have a full recruiting board and see if maybe we can find some gems. All right, well, I've added the full 35 to the board. Uh, mostly guys who had interest in us uh, and then guys with, you know, impressive measurables. But I did add in a couple of top 100 players that seemed like we would get decent bonus points. We're going to take a look at the ones that like us first here in the offseason. See if we find any true gems or any busts in that one quarterback. He's a bust. Minus five. He's slow, but he's honestly not a bad passer. I think he's going to be uh, about equal to what we have right now, but you never know. Second player goes down. Third player goes down. And it seems like it could just be uh, a common theme is... Not a whole lot of people liking us, except we find an athlete who does have a little bit of interest in us and could potentially be okay for us. We've found a couple of more busts, and with the final uh, scouting here, we're going to take a look at Jason Sutherland, a cornerback. He goes down to a 67 overall, but honestly, I can't be too upset with that. Very decent coverage, relatively quick. Um, yeah. I mean, we have a few guys here at the top of our board that could be phenomenal for us, but uh, we're going to wait to see until uh, next episode if they're actually going to be good. And also, it'll give us a chance to see if our bonus points will be, you know, worth even scouting them at all. 
Now, I've said multiple times that we're going to be changing our playbook for this season. Uh, and what I'm going to base it off of is our offensive coordinator's specialty. So, John Arnold, our OC, is, well, offensively, he runs the Oklahoma or a multiple offense. So, I'm going to be making a, uh, a playbook off of this. And I think that what we're going to do is we're going to live stream it so that you guys can have some feedback and help us decide what plays to run. Look at coach got the turf tape on. He's committed to the game. <laughs> but anyways, we're going to be uh, live streaming the creation of our playbook. So again, if you want to have some input or if you have some ideas as to what plays or what type of plays we should put into it, or if you'll, you know, just want to see it be formed or you just want to come hang out. We're either going to be doing it uh, today, the day that this video is being posted, or probably tomorrow, if not today. And we are going to do that over on Twitch. And as always, that is twitch.tv slash goodmaster. If you're not already, follow me there. Turn on notifications so that when we go live with this, uh, you can get a notification and come pop by and help us uh, create a, a playbook that could potentially help this team meet its expectations from last year. Obviously, I gotta say thank you guys also for the fact that we've hit 3,000 subscribers. That is pretty incredible, and every single one of you that does hit the subscribe button uh, just absolutely makes my day. Unfortunately, it's gonna have to do it for this episode. If you enjoyed it, please feel free to hit the like button. Curious to know uh your guys's thoughts on how the season ended up and i'm curious to know what you guys think that will be ranked uh, at the start of the season that is of course if we get ranked at all after you've done that if you haven't already subscribed and you want to join the 3,000 other people that have feel free to hit that button and then you can head down to the description where you'll find links to my twitch at twitch.tv slash goonmaster and there's also links to my twitter our community discord and the college football revamp mod if you're trying to get it for yourself all that being said though thank you guys so much for watching my name is Goonmaster. you guys are the gray boys wherever you are have a good night or have a good morning we'll see you later adios